Welcome to the best film and television department at Hamilton Boys High School. It's also the only film and television department at Hamilton Boys High School. Today, you're here to learn about lighting. Today we'll be learning about three-point lighting, the different lighting techniques, lighting equipment, and common problems you can face along the way. Without further ado, let's hand it off to my clapped friend. Thank you, my equally clapped individual. Now, let's learn about three-point lighting, the standard lighting setup. The key light is the most important light as it is the brightest light and is the main illuminator on your subject. The fill light, slightly dimmer than the key light, is placed on the opposite side of the key light and it illuminates the other side of the subject's face. This light complements the key light as it eliminates the shadows created by the key light. The back light is used to eliminate any shadows created by the key or the fill light in the background. Using this standard setup, we can properly light up our subject from all angles, eliminating any shadows created. Now that we've learned about this setup, let's learn about lighting equipment. Diffusers help reduce the amount of light reaching the subject. A diffuser can help soften the light by spreading it on its surface and soften the harsh sun or artificial light. Reflectors help reflect the light from a light source to spread light onto another area of the subject. Reflectors help spread the light to the opposite side of where the light is coming from. Reflectors come in white, black, gold, and silver, and can be used for different purposes. Redheads range from 1000 to 2000 watts. Redheads are typically used indoors in small spaces to light up a studio or a classroom sized room. While blondes, the brighter of the two, range up to over 2000 watts. Blondes can be used to light up larger areas like a school hall or a school gym or any large area outdoors. Gels come in a variety of different colors and can be used over any light source to create a certain mood. Hmm, I know how to use a lighting equipment. It's pretty easy, right? Oh! Don't listen to him. First, we must learn about the common lighting problems. Exposure is the amount of light that the camera sensor lets in. Too much light and it is overexposed, making it too bright to make any detail. Too less light and it is underexposed, meaning all the shaded areas will be way too shaded. To fix this, make sure your camera settings are on auto or adjust the exposure manually to get the optimal exposure. Flare is when an unwanted light from an unwanted light source enters the shot. This can be created from external lights and reflective surfaces. Fix this by angling the shot differently or repositioning the camera. The white balance controls the temperature of the shot. It can make the white colors of the shot turn orange or a blue glow. This is sometimes good for an effect, but we normally keep it on auto to ensure these problems don't occur. Equipment failure can be a burden, as it usually is unexpected and caused by an accident. To ensure this doesn't happen, always carry an extra set of each piece of equipment. Planning, planning, planning. Remember, before starting anything, you should have some sort of plan. Without this, there's no organization and you'll be going off your memory. I recommend using a script that covers all the dialogue, filming, and sound aspects of film. And also, having a lighting plan. Well, I hope you've listened to what I've had to say and you're not doing what this idiot's doing. Thank you, goodbye.